Hello and welcome to the Humbrol YouTube channel. This is part 2 of our series of videos on the brand new Humbrol enamel washes. In part 1 of this series we showed you the most basic of uses for these new products, but in part 2 we're going to be integrating the enamel washes with all of our existing products to create a versatile and effective Humbrol weathering system. In particular we'll be using Humbrol washes with the weathering powders to broaden the range of colours that are available and achieve some special effects. The model that's getting weathered in this video is a large Hornby engine shed which is made from resin. Most of the model is covered with this corrugated texture which comes from the factory with a nice white finish to represent modern day cladding. In this video we're going to be replacing that finish with walls which look like sheets of rusty corrugated tin and a roof which looks like weather beaten cement particle board. Before we do any weathering on this model we're going to need to repaint it. Here we're using thin down Humbrol acrylics and we're going to paint the roof a shade of brown and the walls a shade of grey. Several thin layers of paint are applied to build up the colour rather than one thick layer. For more information on brush painting with Humbrol acrylics our video on the new flat brushes range covers the subject in a little more detail. Next the roof is divided in two along the middle using some masking tape and a darker shade of the base colour is mixed together with Humbrol acrylic thinners ready for use in the airbrush. This darker paint is then airbrushed onto the surface of the model along the edge of the masking tape lines. This helps to break that solid continuous surface up and make it look like it's made out of individual panels. For more information on using Humbrol acrylics in an airbrush why not see our video how to use Humbrol acrylic thinners which covers the subject in more depth. When the masking tape is removed we'll have a nice neat line and this is the starting point for our paint job. We may also have some areas which look a little bit bright but this next step will take care of those. Using a piece of card or packaging with a straight edge we're now going to paint on the vertical lines which complete the grid pattern that gives the roof its panelised look. By simply spraying along the edge we can break the roof up into individual sections using the darker base colour and then feather the paint with the airbrush to make each of these sections look individual. Using a straight edged mask in this fashion gives us the freedom to go around the roof and apply the paint from different directions whilst keeping everything neat. By turning the card horizontally we can also enhance the three dimensional look of the paint job by leaving a small amount of the brighter colour along the middle of the roof. It's time to paint the walls next and we're going to carry out the exact same process as we did on the roof only we're working in the opposite direction by spraying a lighter shade of grey over the darker base colour. The same straight edged card mask is used to divide the walls up into individual panels each of which receives a varying amount of coverage from the airbrush. With the mask used to divide the wall area up into individual sections we're also going to spray certain areas freehand to make them much brighter than the sections either side. This gives the impression of sheets of corrugated metal that have been replaced more recently than the ones around them and helps to add some more variety to the surface finish. When the paint is dry we can remove the masking tape and take a look at the transformation that's taken place on this model. With that nice white factory finish gone we can now start to apply some really heavy weathering techniques using the new Humbrol enamel washes. Starting with the dark grey and the dark brown shades we're going to add more visual contrast to the different sections of the roof by applying the washes in small controlled areas and using it to break up the surface colour. The dark green and black shades of Humbrol enamel wash will be applied to the lower edges of the roof and along the edges of the panel lines. This will add more contrast and helps to represent built up grime. We're also going to need Humbrol enamel thinners to dilute some of the washes and to help feather the edges to avoid tide marks. To begin with we're going to transfer some of the dark grey wash into a small container and dilute it with a little bit of Humbrol enamel thinners. This mixture is then simply brushed onto the surface of the model in areas where we wish to vary the tone of the paintwork underneath. This process is commonly referred to as filtering and is used to break up the surface colour and add more visual interest and depth to the surface finish of the model. 
As you can see we are applying Humbrol enamel thinners directly over an unprotected acrylic surface without causing any damage. It's important to remember though that Humbrol enamel thinners can damage acrylic paint so always test a small area first to ensure that there's not going to be any adverse reactions. If you do have any concerns why not try mixing in a few drops of Humbrol clear to your paint mix to enhance the durability of the finish. With the filtering stage complete, we're going to start the heavy weathering with some of the dark green wash. We're going to use a soft round colour row brush to apply the wash to the surface of the model and whilst it's still wet we're going to switch to the Humbrol stipple brush to manipulate it. Because we want these effects to be much stronger, we're not going to dilute the wash with any enamel thinners, instead we're going to apply it straight from the bottle in a strip about 15 millimeters wide. While the wash is still wet we're going to switch to the stipple brush and we're going to feather the paint upwards to gently blend it with the rest of the roof. This stage can be repeated multiple times by allowing the wash to harden fully before applying another layer. This enables us to gradually build the colour up into a high contrast area without losing control over the application by applying too much in one go. This simple technique is then rolled out along the whole lower edge of the roof, using the round brush to apply the wash and the stipple brush to blend everything together. At the point where the two sets of panels meet in the middle of the roof, there would also be an accumulation of dirt and grime, so the technique is used in this location as well. Because of the texture of the roof on this model, the wash may creep downwards into the section below which is undesirable as we wish to keep a nice neat divide. Any of the wash which has crept into unwanted areas can be cleaned away using a brush moistened with Humbrol enamel thinners. The dark grey and black shades of Humbrol enamel wash are now going to be used to deepen the paint in selected areas to enhance the contrast and make the finish more varied as you can see on the other side of the roof. The application is the same as we did earlier with the dark green wash only it's much more controlled and a smaller amount is applied each time. The Humbrol stipple brush is used again to feather the wash out and blend everything together. Humbrol's black enamel wash is a very strong colour so a little dilution with thinners may be required to ensure that it doesn't overpower the paint underneath. By selecting certain areas of the roof to treat with the black wash as opposed to applying it all over we can give the impression of certain panels being replaced over time and other panels being in place for much longer. This variation helps to keep things interesting on what otherwise would have been a big flat area which is all the same colour. To add even more diversity to the finish we can also mask off each individual section and then take advantage of the thin consistency of Humbrol enamel washes to carry out some splattering with different shades of wash. This adds a high degree of texture and helps to break the surface area up even more without overpowering the work that we've already done. If you've ever taken a look at the corrugated roof on a factory or similar industrial building, you will have noticed that there's a build up of moss growth and loose stones in the corrugations of the roof and this simple technique gives the visual impression that these details are present. With the basics out of the way on the roof, it's time to get serious about the weathering now using rust, dark grey and black shades on the walls and introducing some of the Humbrol weathering powders as well to create all different kinds of rusty shades. The first step is to identify which panels we want to appear heavily rusted and give them a filter of the rust coloured Humbrol enamel wash. We're going to apply this straight from the bottle this time as the application of Humbrol enamel thinners allows the paint to spread too much. On the roof this wasn't an issue and actually added to the effect but on the walls we want to stay much more controlled so we're using the wash neat. Other panels which have been replaced more recently wouldn't have any rust on them but they'd still be susceptible to a build up of dirt and grime so we're going to apply some localised areas of the black wash and then feather the edges out using a brush soaked in Humbrol enamel thinners. By weathering each section of the wall individually we can build up a varied and interesting surface and avoid any repetition which would ruin the realism of the model. 
To keep things interesting we can also add some feature weathering to certain areas of the model. Here we've applied a streak of black wash at half height to represent grime which is accumulated on a panel which may be slightly bowed in the middle. Subsequent layers of black wash will deepen the effect and we've broken that large surface area up without the need to rely on rusting techniques too heavily. As we work our way around the model now and apply washes over the top of the filters that we applied earlier, you'll see that the colour starts to become more bold and the effect less subtle. For some modellers this may be the extent of weathering that they want to achieve and now would be a good time to call it a day, happy with the results that we've achieved using Humbrol enamel washes on their own. We're not going to call it a day however, instead we're going to use dark earth, rust and iron oxide weathering powders with the rust, dark brown and black shades of Humbrol enamel wash. We're going to throw in a splash of Humbrol enamel thinners and we're going to give this building a rusty finish that looks like it's about to fall down. Humbrol weathering powders and Humbrol enamel washes work as a partnership, the weathering powders providing the variation in colour and the enamel washes providing the fixing element. Just a small amount of weathering powder when added to the rust coloured enamel wash will diversify the colour massively and give you a variety of shades. Throw in some of the other colours of enamel wash and suddenly you have a wide and diverse palette of colours to apply to the surface of the model and application is as easy as we've already shown you in this video. The weathering powder and enamel wash mixture is dabbed onto the surface in very controlled tight areas and then blended together with a brush dampened with enamel thinners. One of the biggest advantages of using Humbrol enamel washes and Humbrol weathering powders in this fashion is just how translucent the colour remains, plus the added advantage of being able to work with enamel thinners over the top to thin the colour out even more. This means we remain in complete control of the rusting effect from start to finish, adding more mixture or removing it with thinners as we see fit. This technique is then worked around various areas on this model surface, applying the weathering powder and Humbrol enamel washes mixture and then bleaching it out with Humbrol enamel thinners to mix everything together on the surface and modify that base colour to give it that seeping rusty effect. The edges of the panels are a prime place to start and the dark bold rusted shades that we've mixed up will help to enhance that panelised look that we've been working to achieve on this model. By thinning the mixture slightly with Humbrol enamel thinners, we can treat certain sections of the wall with a more subtle overall rusted effect which complements the heavier rusting nicely and gives the model an extra dimension. And here we can see the overall result that the Humbrol enamel wash weathering has done to this model. It's a complete transformation from what we started out with, with those one piece white factory finished walls all broken up into individual panels now and rusted and weathered individually to give the surface area tons of variety and depth. The application process was simple, the products are available now so why not grab some of the new Humbrol enamel washes and give them a try on your next project. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again next time.